John, we're all bracing for whatever Jay Powell has to say coming up on Friday. Curious what you're watching for and how whatever he says could mean for the crypto ecosystem. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum now are at 0.75 in terms of correlation with the NASDAQ. So what the market is saying is it's all high risk assets are correlated. Um, and Jay is going to raise rates. You know, I think uh, Shanali cited yesterday uh, Dan Moorhead from Pantera. I knew him from Tiger uh, saying that we need rates to go a lot higher. And I agree it, it will go a lot higher. But what I think the market needs to understand is that there will be alpha in the crypto asset space. And there's very good reasons for that. The uh, fundamentals are absolutely increasing and improving. The uh, technicals, I mean, there is, if you think about the, uh, uh, the crypto market uh, caps, they've gone down, but stable coins have not. And that tells you a lot of people are just hiding and they're ready to deploy. And finally, I know you guys ultimately want to talk about the merge uh, with Ethereum, and that's a huge catalyst. So I think what's going to surprise people is um, that 0.75 correlation, no matter where the market goes, will go down and you're going to have some alpha in the space. John, some major investors in the crypto space, you said you worked at Tiger. Dan Moore had also worked at Tiger before. Mike Novogratz previously at Fortress. How much do you need to be in touch with the macro to get the fundamentals right in crypto? Is it more about the protocols or is it more about what's happening around the ecosystem? Well, I've had the benefit now of being of an, oper an operator for five years and being an investor in technology for longer than that. Um, so I think having a macro perspective is always very important. Um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you need to know what season it is so you know what clothes you put on. But then what clothes you put on is dictated by your personal tastes and exactly how warm it is. So as an operator now, I'm really focused on getting more users in, uh, getting the masses into the space, uh, getting more developers. There's a few hundred thousand developers in the space. There's 30 million plus web developers. All these layer ones should be working on getting more of those developers and more applications and more use cases. Uh, into the space. And by the way, those use cases, they are really happening. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. operating momentum. Speaking of developers, you're seeing people in the industry get paid to help kind of fix up any issues that might be pertaining to the Ethereum merge that is so highly anticipated. So a lot of people hard at work. How might the merge affect other assets outside of Ethereum? This is great because I know uh, it makes great headlines to say Ethereum killer and market share here. Um, again, I'm in the belief that the space is so small that the space should work together to help the masses come over and bridge that gap. Um, I'm rooting as an operator for Ethereum merge to, to be smooth and to happen on September 15th very well. I mean, Avalanche is uh, EVM compatible. Assets move back and forth. There's a bridge where over $50 billion of assets have moved back and forth between Ethereum and Avalanche. So the more people that come into the ecosystem, the more applications get developed. It's good for many layer ones, in my opinion. Um, I think what your, I, I think what your users um, should also be uh, hopeful that the merge goes well. I mean, you know, your viewers love to uh, invest in companies like Coinbase, one of the best companies out there and, and that's a listed company. And if the merge goes well, basically that's going to allow the concept of staking happen and in individuals, institutions can earn eight, nine percent. Now, the way Coinbase works is that's a whole new revenue stream. If using their current, you know, um, formula of take rates and stuff, that potentially could mean $600 million of revenue for Coinbase. And that's off of the base of this year, probably around 3.8 billion. So that's significant and it's very good for Coinbase stock. So I think your viewers should be rooting for a successful merge as well. You know, it's, it's clearly been a volatile year and it could continue to be volatile through the rest of the year. What is your outlook on how long this quote unquote winter lasts? and you know where we are at this time let's say next year um it is so i personally think um the, the winter will be here for a little bit longer but what i'm really looking forward to is these new applications these new pro protocols that literally redefine the way businesses operator operate and businesses will be built i mean um if you if you what you can do when tokenization is here in full swing 
is you're going to encode the business logic into a smart contract. And then the platform is the business. So that what does that mean? That means like right now we're talking about Coinbase. I mean, Coinbase has about 5,000 employees, market cap of 16 billion. It has about 2.4, $2.5 billion of daily volume. A company like Uniswap, also an exchange in the DeFi ecosystem, it has a billion dollars of volume a day. And that's about a hundred employees mm -hmm. only there. So if you do the token cap and the market cap to employees, at Coinbase, it's about $3 million of value created by, uh, by employee, roughly. At Uniswap, we're mm -hmm. talking about like $48, $50 million uh, worth of value created by each individual. So what we're doing is we're going to redefine what businesses are. And the best part of this is the network effects that happen hey, John, will accrue back to the users, I not to, to some I need entity. to really get your opinion here on something because you were talking about staking. And you know, really quickly here, what is staking most like in traditional financial services? The reason I ask is because if it's going to be a bigger part of the ecosystem, Coinbase might start making it a bigger part of its product suite. Is it subject to regulation in a way that a traditional lending product would be or a clearinghouse would face? Well, philosophically, what it is, it doesn't exist in the traditional world. You know, the way value is distributed in the traditional world is really, and created and distributed is really two ways, right? There's labor, and then there is uh, using your capital to make more money. With labor, you get paid for the value add you create. Capital, you take your existing money, you put it to work, and hopefully you get a return on it. Staking is a combination of the two. You are actually taking your existing capital, helping validate and secure a blockchain, and therefore getting a reward as well as a yield for it. So it's a hybrid. And when you talk about how do you regulate that, that's a really good question because is it labor or is it actually dividends and yields? It's not clear. Um, I kind of think you're putting things to work and that's the spirit of permissionless, get being part of the community, helping make decisions and getting rewarded for your efforts, not necessarily just getting, putting your collateral down and getting a yield.